Hey guys, Jeremy here with RC Collaborative. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to solder. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true, but the world is pretty cold. You might need a sweater too. All right, this video has been a long time coming. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to show you some or some good examples of soldering how to explain it and basically how to present to you the best tips possible to help you with your soldering. Um, I've been soldering for a very long time. When I first started in RC, we had to build our own battery packs and actually solder the cells together. And we had little fancy jigs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, nowadays, you don't build a lipo pack. So uh, that's kind of gone away. That was kind of a nickel metal hydrate type thing. Um, but with that said, I want to go through and show you a lot of examples on soldering. Uh, some of the things I have to show you is I'm going to show you what a cold solder looks like. Um, I actually had the opportunity, the unfortunate opportunity of getting something in my hands that had a cold solder. And whenever it comes to soldered stuff, if I get something used, I'm going to redo it anyways. Uh, because I know my solder is really good and I, I'm good at soldering, so I want to make sure everything is nice and clean. So uh, I'm going to show you that ESC that has cold solders on it. Um, on top of that, I want to show you how to solder XT90 plugs. And then I'm also going to solder up some receiver wires. Um, and the, the reason I'm showing you these different things is when working with like receiver wires, the wires are thinner and they're done much quicker and the technique's slightly different. The technique's not really different. There's just more caution to it and you have to make sure that you're doing it right and you have to do it quick. And then with the XT90 plugs or wires are thicker, the connectors are bigger, and they take longer, more heat and that kind of stuff. So there's a bit of a difference between the two and hopefully you can kind of differentiate that and, and the two different clips I'm gonna show you. Um, and then the other thing was, um, definitely I'm gonna show you what my ESC looks like after fixing all the cold solders on it and basically exp explain the processes of soldering and what makes it work. All right guys, before I go and show you the clips of the XT90s and the small wires and all that other stuff, um, I want to show you this one clip that explains the basic three key points of soldering that you need to follow in order to be successful. Um, so let's take a quick look at that. All right guys, I wanted to make a, kind of a master soldering video uh, to kind of explain the concept of soldering and how to be successful at it. And one of the two major, I, I'd say if there was a triangle of needs for soldering at three points, the three things you would want is a high amount of heat on your soldering iron, Good quality solder, good silver solder that uh, leaves a nice finish and, and has good quality rosin in it. I recommend Kester brand. And the other thing to be successful is premium wire. Not necessarily premium, but rated wire rated correctly for soldering. What I have here, this is kind of like the highest grade wire you can get. The silicone wire. Uh, it's 200 degrees Celsius rated on the jacket there. And what that means is this wire will withstand 200 degrees Celsius before it starts to degrade and break down, possibly start melting and fail in performance. Um, and then th I have this wire here. This is a marine grade boat wire. I use this stuff all the time. It solders very good. Has a, a, a rating of 105 degrees Celsius. Now. From my experience, what I found is you want a wire that's at least about 100 degrees Celsius for soldering uh, to handle the heat of the soldering and do a good job without the jacket melting and that kind of stuff. So this stuff does very good. And on top of that, it's marine grade. Marine grade is the highest quality of anything you can get. Um, it will not, it will, I don't want to say will not corrode. It's designed to resist corrosion and that kind of stuff. So if you're somewhere where your electronics are known for corrosion or you have a lot of rust, if you're up north somewhere, maybe look into using some marine grade wire. I buy wire just like this from West Marine. It has two wires in it that are 10 gauge. 
and you can buy that and you know you then boom you've got 10 gauge wire and you, you get two pieces of it red and black um, you know it comes red and black or red and yellow sometimes I buy the red and yellow so there you um, there's the heat rating on the wire I showed you there so that's that's like one of the number one things you want to look at if you're buying any wire or you're gonna try to solder something and you're not sure if it's gonna work out well then uh, you know look at the C rating on the wire and see if it will handle the, the heat of being soldered so with that said when I was talking about solder uh, the solder itself it has rosin or flux if you it, depending on whatever you want to call it they call it rosin core or it's basically flux which is like this stuff here this uh, tinning flux is for like normal house plumbing house plumbing solder doesn't have flux in the, in the middle of it there's no there's no rosin so you you put the flux separately and the rosin and flux is important and what it does is when you heat up the object you're trying to solder the flux or rosin whatever you're using eats at the surface of the metal and, and it basically does like a scrubbing on it and gives you a clean surface and etches it so the solder has something to stick to um, a lot of time when soldering plumbing, people use wire brushes to clean the exterior surface of the piping first to help get rid of any contaminants and then use the flux on top of that to eat through it. Now that's house plumbing. You know, electronics, I don't do that. I just use the rosin core flux or rosin core solder. And this very thin solder doesn't have a lot of rosin in the core it's a very thin core so sometimes what I do is I over apply the solder to get extra rosin and then discard the extra solder just let it drip off fling it off whatever it is so I get the extra rosin out of it I may only need this much solder but I'll use this much to make sure I have enough rosin on the item I'm soldering so uh, that's that's my tip on that um, so I went over the solder, uh, the, the rosin, how that works, and one of the most important things for everything to connect it all together, you can't just use good solder and you can't just have good wire. The most important thing is having enough heat on your soldering iron. Your soldering iron needs to be able to apply enough heat fast enough to heat up that wire and thoroughly 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 melt the solder heat up the rosin etch all the metal and let everything flow at the right temperature to where it needs to go so if you don't have enough heat then the solder is only going to maybe melt close to the iron and it won't flow into the wire like you want it you want to heat up the wire to the point where you touch the wire with the solder and the solder melts directly on the wire when you're not you know you don't touch it to the soldering iron you touch it to the wire and if you don't have the right amount of heat, what you're gonna, what's going to happen is you're going to sit there with your soldering iron forever and you're going to get that wire so hot that you can't even handle it, but it won't actually be hot enough to melt the solder and get a good solder. And what, what happens to people is this is how you end up with a cold solder. So you don't have a good enough soldering iron. You know, you've got the cheap weller. You're sitting there and you're taking forever heat up. If you feel like you're taking a century to get something done, your soldering iron is either weak or not working correctly. Uh, mine myself, I had to replace a wand recently because mine was going out and I, was, I found myself trying to solder things that normally would take no time at all and sitting there for hours, what it felt like hours, and not being able to melt it. So you really want to make sure that your soldering iron is the correct temperature. Um, and for me, that's highest setting at all times, no matter what I'm soldering. Uh, whether I'm soldering these thin wires here or soldering the big wires. I want to get the heat in there as fast as possible and get get done because the faster you get done the faster it starts cooling down and the heat will stop traveling and, and going to other areas you don't want so like when doing an ESC when I did the wires in my Tiki and ESC I tried to do it as fast as possible and get as much you know heat in there as fast as I can to heat up the immediate area and get a good solder where everything is nice and hot and melted but not be on it long enough to cause damage or something else um, so 
that's my spiel on that. You really need to have a, a good amount of heat. This system here is like 50, 60 bucks, and it comes with the what's called a rework station on it. This is meant for heating up microchips on, on motherboards and that kind of stuff and heating up a big area so you can desolder a whole chip at once. I don't do that kind of work. Uh, I use it as a heat gun for my, my heat shrinks. Works great. So while you're soldering, you have your heat shrink there and, and, and you're all good to go. You don't have it to ha uh, have a separate heat gun or a lighter to do your heat shrink. It's built into the soldering uh, station. All right, so in the video I explain uh, how you want to pay attention to the C rating on the wire, uh, the kind of solder that you want to use with the rosin core, and then the most important thing, which is having a good hot soldering iron. I really, if you don't want to have problems, I really recommend getting a good soldering iron, and they're not really that expensive, uh, but the hotter they get, the better the solders you're going to be able to do. So. Um, with that said, you don't want any cold solders, and that's, that's just what I recommend. So let's take a quick look at this ESC that has cold solders, and that way hopefully you guys can see what a cold solder is. All right, let's take a look. I'm in the garage here. I've got an, uh, a new, to me, RX-8 Gen 3 ESC for my Mugen buggy. And I was planning on doing a soldering video at some point to show you guys some really good tips on how to solder. And one of the things that would have been nice to show you in the video is what a poor solder looks like. And I was wondering how I was going to do that because I don't know how to really create a poor solder anymore. But this ESC has some very poor solders on it and I'm going to show you why. Um, you see all these chunks of... These chunks of solder here. You see this little flat area right here? That's where someone took a cold iron and touched it right there and it kind of melted that area but didn't melt everything. And then you've kind of got these chunks over here. Those are bad Those are bad solders, you don't want that. And then also if you look very closely, they didn't tin all the wire. You want to tin solder all the way up your wire through the whole exposed area right here. You know, it'll go up into the silicone sleeve a bit. So these were not even very, they're not tinned very well. And it can be a challenge with thick wire like this sometimes if you don't have a good soldering iron. So I've got my soldering iron here set on 480 degrees, which is maximum. And my opinion is when soldering, you want to put the maximum heat as possible to get it done as quick as possible. If you have a cold soldering iron, you're gonna sit here and apply a bunch of heat that's gonna um, heat up this whole everything to the point of damaging something but not actually melt the solder properly in the way you want so you want to apply your heat and you want it to melt the solder you want everything to get nice and super hot and when I tell you the key to soldering everything revolves around heat two main things uh, heat and um, the flux which the flux works based on heat which I'm going to demonstrate um, in a different way later so I'm going to begin by removing all of these wires because none of them are tinned correctly. I don't know what kind of solder is on here. There is different kinds. I used Kester solder, rosin core, stuff's great. They got enough to last me forever here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take all this apart and redo it nicely. So that way um, I'll trust it later. Okay. So, um, I showed you the cold solders, you can see what those look like, definitely want to fix those, you don't want cold solders, uh, you get the jagged solder, you can tell it's not all melted into a nice ball, uh, when you do soldering correctly everything will melt together and become a nice fluid, uh, not necessarily a sphere, but you can tell that everything is in, as one piece. Uh, with cold soldering you're kind of just putting little pieces of solder on top of it and doing a, a junky job at soldering it together. It's not really melted. Um, so with that said, let's take a look at soldering up some XT90 plugs. All right guys, I want to show you how I solder my XT90 plugs. Um, I believe that for people who aren't very used to soldering, doing these bigger connectors or working with bigger wire like this 10 gauge wire can be more of a challenge. 
And that's because the bigger the contacts and the bigger the wire, the more heat the object is going to absorb and the more heat it's going to take to, to melt the solder to get the job done. So the amount of time it takes to solder this thin wire will be much less than it will be uh, to solder some bigger wires or big connectors. Thin wire would be done in a matter of a couple seconds. Uh, the bigger wires can still be in seconds, but you know, definitely usually longer. This wire here isn't that thick, but when I do Max T 90s, the first thing I do is tin the um, you're gonna tin the wire, and then you're gonna tin the connector. Get the wire hot, and you want the solder to melt on the wire, not the iron. So I'm gonna feed that in there. Now I'm, I'm overfeeding solder in there more than necessary and the reason I do that is because my solder is very thin and inside of it is the rosin or flux or whatever you want to call it. So I found with this thinner wire the ratio of flux isn't very high. So what I do is I feed extra solder in to get the additional flux needed out of the solder and then you just brush away the excess solder. This is, this is the solder I didn't need. You know, just flings right off. Yeah, this takes a bit longer than the than the servo wire. There we go. Touching the solder to the wire directly. I don't know if you can see it, it starts to bubble. Uh, the bubbling is good. That's the, the the rosin and the flux eating at the wire and doing its job. Everything's nice and hot. So I've got my Protec soldering jig here, and it's a works pretty good for this um, XT90 plug. So now there's a big pocket down in this connector, so I'm gonna feed a good bit of solder down in there. Get it hot first. Now you don't have to fill it all the way. You just want to coat. You want to coat it all. Yeah, I kind of filled the one on the right. The one on the left isn't that filled, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be filled. So now what you can do is, um, I've already cut some heat shrink and slid it down on the wires. The XT90s that I buy, they come with, um, they come with these sheathings on them. Um, I don't really trust these, they can come off. And I'm gonna use one, or I'm, actually I'm not gonna use one on this. This is just my charging cable. But sometimes what I do is I use the heat shrink and this. Here's an example of one I've done. Uh, it has the connector on it. But I like to do both the heat shrink and this. If not, just do the heat shrink. It's better than this because the heat shrink will never come off. So the flat side's positive. I've got my red. Save that connector for something else. Solder in there hot. Start getting this hot. That moved down on me. All right, so that shifted on me. It's not a big deal. It happens with these things. So I'm just gonna use the soldering iron and push it back down. Starting to get hot and go back in. That's fine. I don't usually have an issue with that. It's 
probably because I'm doing it straight up and down. Usually I take my connector and do it sideways. All right, that guy is super hot. All right, so I've got it sideways now. Let me do it that way. Oh buddy, that's so hot, it's still melted. Okay, so I really hope you guys can see that the solder is very shiny, it's smooth, it's completely it's it's molded into everything, it's like one. There's no chunks. That is a very good solder, definitely not a cold solder. So, I can slide the seat shrink up. All right, let me do the other side. shiny nice good flow in there use the rework gun and that's it so that's how you start the XT90s all right, so you can see with the XT90 plugs, um, I spent a little bit of time heating the wire up and, and getting, the, getting it hot enough to, to melt the solder and getting that together. It really didn't take that long. Um, I do use a good soldering iron on high heat and it really makes my life uh, a lot easier when, when soldering bigger wires and that kind of stuff. So let's take a look at some smaller wires and you'll see that uh, they, take, they take a lot less time to solder. So let's check that out. Okay guys, so I have uh, my Tekken hot wire here and it had uh, this female plug on it and the only plug that fit this was the um, the main power wire that came out of the ESC and went into my receiver and I don't want to have to pull my receiver out every time disconnect the ESC to connect it to the hot wire to program it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off one of the female ends of this Y splitter and I'm going to solder it on here giving me a male and female end so I can use either or and then I'll be able to plug this into my, my fan port. So I already started stripping these wires and then I realized uh, I'm working on a soldering video so I thought I would show you soldering some thin wires. To strip these wires, uh, wire strippers don't usually work, I just take my nails and pinch it and pull. And with thin wires I like to strip a lot and I'll show you why. So I'm going to cut off this. Whenever you're stripping wires for soldering or even just doing like crimp on connectors, you always want to twist them like I'm doing so that they don't start to fray apart and fight against you. <clears throat> I just cut my nails of course and now I'm stripping, trying to strip wires so I've only got one more to do.
Alright, and then you've got your best friend heat shrink here. The super tiny ones. And I'm gonna put that here. Like so. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a bigger piece here. Trim that down. Feed that on first. And when I'm done with all my small solders and my small heat shrinks, I can run back over it with this big this big one. Tie it all off. Alright, I'm gonna use the full length here. I'm putting the heat shrink so far away and stripping it down because I don't want it to melt or start to shrink on me too far up. Okay. All right, heat shrink's primed. All right, so white is going to yellow and I like to take the two wires that I've already twisted and then twist them together. Oops, I'm doing this wrong. Alright, so I'm actually going to be doing it this way. And actually, I want to strip some more. That's not enough on this yellow one. <clears throat> that looks better. I'm going to take them and cross them like so, and then I'm just going to twist one side. And I'm going to twist the other side. Alright, I've got them twisted together. Keep them flat. You don't want any frays coming out or you'll have trouble getting the heat shrink over it. And I think I was explaining before that you want your soldering iron really hot. And I've got it on max, even though I'm doing these small wires, but that's okay. It's just gonna go quicker. So if you're still practicing, you can start on a lower temperature, but I feel like it's gonna lead to bigger issues. So I'm gonna heat this little wire up, and then I'm going to put the solder on the wire, and I'll know when the wire's hot enough because the solder will melt on the wire. So, melting on the wire, not the iron. Yep, melting on the wire, so the wire's hot. And this is a thin wire, so the jackets on them aren't very, they're not very thick, and they're not high rated temperature for soldering. So you wanna be quick with it. Heat shrink over. So let me get the red going here. Let me let me have you take a look at that. So the solder has a nice flow. It's um, fully liquid. It's not blotchy. So I've got a good bond there. And I didn't cook the wire or melt it even though I have a high temperature soldering iron. You just gotta be quick about it. When you're working on thick wire, like this 10 gauge wire, and trying to do an XT90 plug, it takes a lot more heat and a lot longer to get these going than it does these small wires. So I don't ever adjust the temperature on my soldering iron. I always leave it at 480, which is the max. And just, you know, you touch the solder on it until it starts melting and you know when it's melting and just get it done. So let's get the red one done. So I'm going to give it a little cross. Start twisting like a bread tie. Twist the other side like a bread tie. Twist them. It looks good. Alrighty. 
clean my soldering iron tip a little bit. Nice and shiny. It's a little bit of resin on rosin on there or whatever. That's fine. Slide the heat shrink over that. That guy is good to go. And then we got the last one here, which is the ground wire. This guy is ready. Let's hit him real quick. Good. Sometimes your solder will stick to the outside, you just knock it off. Alright, so I'm going to use my rework gun, basically my heat gun here. Comes on my soldering station. These little wires, I try to do as much support as possible. So I'm putting an additional piece of heat shrink to kind of bind all these pieces together. And there we have it. So I can now plug this into the fan port of my Tekin ESC, or I can still plug it into my um, the output of the Tekin ESC. And either way, I can I can do it both ways. All right, so you can see the, the small wires. Uh, I put the heat on it, and within a couple seconds, the wire is hot enough for the solder to spread, which is what you want. And then I showed you how I, I support everything with some heat shrink. And then, so I showed you the cold solders, I showed you the XT90s, I showed you kind of the receiver wires, how to solder those small wires. So we did thick wires, small wires. And the other thing I wanted to show you is the final result of my MBX7R when I resoldered the ESC and got it all cleaned up. Um, I was gonna show you the whole process and I just, it was taking too long and I decided not to do that. But all the rules, all the rules, same rules apply. You gotta get the right amount of heat in there. Everything needs to be completely melted and that's how you get a good solder. So let's take a look at that ESC and see what that came out to look like compared to the uh, original solder joints when I got it. All right guys, so I showed you my Tekin ESC when I got it, had really bad cold solders on it. Uh, all the soldering was very poor. Whoever did it didn't get everything hot enough and they kind of blotched it together to where it was sticking, but not really uh, as one. When you're done soldering, you want everything to be as one. You don't want to see any any uh, gaps, cracks, jagged edges, and your solder should look like a ball of some sort, some shape of ball or, or fluid like. And so I wanted to show you the final product here. Um, if you look right here, you see it's all fluid. All that solder is uh, all running together. It goes all the way up my wire. And you can actually see right here where my thumbnail is, the solder goes all the way up to there. So when I pull on it, it doesn't bend because the solder runs up there. And the same thing here, the solder runs to that fingernail, this solder runs to that fingernail, 
and this one runs to here. So when I tinned my wires, my solder was properly heated and it went all the way into the wire and tinned that whole section, which is what you want. And then you have, um, that's a fluid connection. There's no jagged edges. It looks like a nice fluid layer of solder. And you've got the same thing here. Everything was nicely melted. Looks like there's a little drip coming off the bottom there. And then I want you to try to see these posts. They're nice and fluid. There's no more chunks. Solder goes, you know, like a one continuous piece of fluid from top to bottom, much cleaner. So that's how I ended up wiring this. And this is like the shortest routing of wire I've ever seen. I couldn't do this wire like that. It put too much stress on the ESC. When I do my wiring, I try to do it where there's no stress. I don't want tension on any of these wires. I don't want tension anywhere because what's to happen is if you install this with tension, it's gonna encourage breakage at one of these connections. Either it's gonna break on the ESC or it could break on the motor. You don't want pulling tension on it all the time and then on top of it, you got vibration. That's equivalent to someone taking the wire and yanking on it constantly because you have the tension on the wire and then the jumping at the track is like someone yanking on it. So, um, I almost wish the ESC was maybe in a different spot so I could make all three of the wires the same, but this was, this was the best I could do feeling comfortable with it without it breaking. And, and you know, these wires here don't have a lot of, like there's a nice loop here for flex. So that's gonna absorb a lot of tension, but this short wire here is gonna have a bit of stress on it for movement. And I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but whenever possible, you know, you want, you, you don't want tension on anything and you try to leave a little loop on it. So that way that you don't have the pulling force on it. So, but overall, I think I'm good. Um, it's just Velcroed on there. It's not like twisted sideways or it doesn't have a lot of tension on it. It's just the wires aren't very long. Um, in other situations, I would try to leave the wires a little bit longer, but this is what I came up with. And then I tried to double protect this and do heat shrink and this, but this wouldn't slide over. Uh, so I'm gonna end up cutting this off or just leaving it there support so the wires don't pull apart. But yeah, this is how I got set up on my, my Tekin. All right guys, so uh, I gave you a bunch of different examples, showed you how I like to solder. Hopefully I fully explained how soldering works and what makes it work well. And uh, between all this, hopefully you guys are able to feel confident and go out there and solder. It's really not hard. If you make sure you got the right wires, you've got good solder and you have the right amount of heat, if you follow those three things, you should have no problem soldering stuff. Um, I'll put the links in the description for everything that I use and what I feel makes uh, soldering easier for me and successful. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comment below, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, comment below. Uh, please let me know if the videos helped you, what you would like to see in the next videos, and if there's anything we can do to make the quality of the videos better for you, that would be great. Um, if you're a vendor and you'd like to send me something to review, uh, product review, or would like to sponsor me for racing, uh, my email is just down here. Send me an email, we'll work it out. Um, other than that, collab on, guys.